We all have our beloved game characters that keep us coming back over and over, but what about the jerks? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the top 10 douchebags in video games. Starting off with number 10, it's Handsome Jack from Borderlands 2. Oh, let's just start right off with a character who's the personification of douchebag. Handsome Jack's the primary antagonist of Borderlands 2, and just look at him. Like, look at him. That is clearly a douchebag. He is an insufferably smug and cruel villain who is constantly calling just to insult you, wears this gaudy, tailored suit, has a handsome face stapled onto his head, and he sounds like the most self satisfied tech bro you've ever heard. Also, he's sociopathically evil, but I, it, he's a villain. You, you would generally expect that part. The thing about Jack is he's such an over-the-top douchebag, it's hard not to be at least a little entertained by him. I will pay you to kill yourself. I've got a perfect spot all picked out for you. But if you want a huge reward, you jump off that cliff and become my bitch. He can pull out some pretty creative insults. You gotta give him that. A uh, funny thing about him is that he's so amusing, the game has to kind of go out of his way to make you hate him. He basically does every possible thing a bad guy could and would do in such a story. He kills Roland, the character from the first game, mutates Bloodwing, tries to blow up your settlement. Hell, the game starts with him trying to kill your characters by blowing up the train that you're on. The man stays on his grind, folks. Not even death can keep this guy's douchebag antics down. He comes back in tales of the Borderlands. He's just as bad. We'd actually put him lower down on the list, but he's too entertaining. He's too fun to hate. And a lot of the guys on this list are just plain despicable. And number nine is General Serrano from Bulletstorm. Do you remember this clown? He's the main bad guy of Bulletstorm, which is a ridiculous game if there ever was one, and he's a perfect enemy for such an over-the-top game. Just from looking at him, you'd think he'd be your standard corrupt military bad guy like half of the Call of Duty games. In terms of his villainy, yes, yeah, that's basically what he is. Um, But the thing that makes him such a douchebag is the way he acts. He's just like a foul-mouthed racist prick who loves to talk mad shit at pretty much every opportunity. You told us the targets were gun runners, slave traders, mass murderers. Yeah, I lied. So what? Normally you just kill him, but because you're stranded on a planet filled with crazy mutants, you're kind of forced to work together with him. I mean, that goes on until he obviously betrays you in the dumbest, most blunt way possible. That's the thing about this guy. He's also kind of entertaining because he's such an obvious sociopath. I mean, really, how is he a, a general? But overall, he's a lot easier to hate than Handsome Jack. And number eight is Harry Flynn from Uncharted 2. I know what you're thinking. Top 10 douchebags. <laughs> How about Nathan Drake then? Yeah, very funny. But if you want a classic no frills douchebag character from a game, look no further than Harry Flynn. Just look at him. You can tell he is a douche from minute one. A designer print t-shirt, the necklace, the hair. You can just tell this guy reads The Secret religiously and years later released a line of premium NFTs. The biggest douchebags in games are the guys who are your allies just as much as your enemies. And this guy, he fits that description to a T because in the first mission, he's on your side. He does betray Drake and leave him rotting in a Turkish prison for months, so that alliance doesn't last very long. But you do meet him again, and no surprise, he's just as much of a douche. Like, first up, you know he's going to betray you, and you hate him long before he does. This guy is such an ass that even though you've gone out of your way not to kill him, when the main bad guy betrays Harry, pulls the old backstab in one two, leaves him for dead, Harry still tries to blow you up with a damn grenade just because he doesn't like Drake's face or something. Yeah, I get it. The bad guy pulled the pin and Flynn was probably going to die no matter what, but you know what? I blame him for it because seriously, douchebag. And number seven, and this one is going to instantly frustrate people who are fans of this series, Ambassador Udina from Mass Effect. The instant we brought this guy up, I was like, you, that, you know, I was just grumbling, saying stuff that wasn't e even words. I, hearing his name or seeing him just pisses me off. Udina is the human representative on the Citadel, and his objective is advancing humanity's interests at all costs. Unless that human is you, then you basically, I don't know, I guess you're an idiot in his eyes and also very expendable. He's second guessing you at every single moment. Uh, he assumes you're lying a lot too for frankly by the end what seems like bizarre reasons because you're very obviously not lying and he's still saying that you're lying. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate. They are.
He's also just super dismissive of everything you say, and because he's the ambassador, you're basically forced to put up with his nonsense. No matter what you do, this guy just complains about how you do things. If you work for humanity's interests, you went too far. If you do things that are more helpful to alien races or the council, you didn't go far enough. Nothing is good enough for this guy. And also look at his face. See his face? Oh, I hate that face. When things start to get serious, instead of supporting you, this idiot locks you out of your ship. And then when you manage to save the galaxy, which includes Earth, the thing that he supposedly cares about, for some reason, he expects you to pick him as humanity's new chair on the council. He's just a condescending prick the entire game, and he wants you to defer to him at all times without having a single clue and being a demonstrable idiot. That's the first game, too. He does not get better in the sequels. I mean, he has less of a role in the sequels because you're out doing way more stuff, but this guy is, is just like classic douche. And number six is Rico from Killzone 2. Now, obnoxious buddy characters are a dime a dozen in military FPS games. But really, one of the most hated ones, Sergeant Rico Velasquez from Killzone, specifically Killzone 2. There's a lot about this guy that rubs people the wrong way. He shouts a lot. He's got a real tough guy persona. He's all shoot first, ask questions later in approach to every single situation. And that's just not how the world works. Uh, but all that stuff wouldn't be so bad in some other character. It's just he's the most blunt and stupid version of all of those traits put together. And in Killzone 2, he's just one of the most hateable characters of all time. His whole motivation is supposed to be that he hates the Hellgast for killing his squad, but his anger is so all-encompassing that it just starts to be annoying after a while. His default response to everything is to just be a jerk and do whatever. He says a bunch of stupid crap and yells at you, even like when you get shot. And when he gets shot, he berates you for it. Like somehow it's your fault that his stupid ass got blasted. He's just standing out in the open like an idiot. And he's a jerk about everything. I'm not going to say, hey, Velasquez, Sarge, you're right out in the open like a huge moron because he's going to be a dick about that too. At the end, you go through all this trouble trying to catch the bad guy, get through a really annoying boss fight that he doesn't help you with. And then he shows up after you did everything and shoots the guy you were supposed to capture. Like the weird thing about him is that if it was your character doing all the crap he did, it probably wouldn't be all that bad, but he's an NPC and it just makes him come off awful. And number five is Seymour Guado from Final Fantasy X. Look at him. Just look at him. In a world filled with peacocking idiots with big stupid hair, this guy trumps all of them. This is one of those guys where you're just like, I hate you immediately. The ridiculous hair, the giant flouncy kimono opened up down to his navel, the chest tattoos, everything just screams the kind of douchebag that makes surfing annoying. Like, surfing is cool, but this kind of guy, he gets involved and all of a sudden nobody wants to surf at all. Not that I can surf. I'm not, I don't even think that that's what I'm saying here. We're talking about vibe. Speaking of vibe, oh, when he talks, wow, that's the most condescending voice I can imagine. The code of the Guardian. How admirable. Well, if you're offering your lives... I will have to take them. Like in the pantheon of Final Fantasy villains, nobody comes close when it comes to douchiness. Even his bad guy plan is douchey. He, he mostly just wants to steal your girlfriend. The only reason he moves on to the whole world destruction thing is because you beat him so thoroughly and he throws a fit and decides to try to kill everyone instead of fighting you. He's not just a douche because of his appearance and voice. His boss tactics are douchey. Like when he hits you with a zombie plus healing combo, that's it's rude. That is insulting. Really, all I needed to do for this entry was just put up a picture of this guy and everybody's douche radar would just go absolutely batshit crazy. And number four is Hyamdal from God of War Ragnarok. Take a god from pretty much any game in the God of War series and you'll probably find a guy who's pretty unlikable, right? Probably the worst though. That little twerp, Hyamdal from God of War Ragnarok. It takes a long time before you even meet him, but wah! Just immediately, this guy leaves an impression. I hate this guy. In just the first scene, he threatens Atreus. And then he condescends like crazy and acts like he's totally superior to you. And I guess, like, in some ways, he does have the power of prophecy, so he knows what you're going to do before you do it. But that's just what makes him such a douche. If you try to fight him, he just laughs off your every move. The entire time Atreus spends in Asgard, Hyamdal's just scheming against him, insulting him, generally being an unpleasant ass. And when you finally 
fight him as Kratos, his douchebaggery doesn't improve, but at least you have a secret weapon to take him down. I can feel your frustration, you know. It is immensely satisfying. Taking him down, by the way, probably one of the most satisfying moments in the whole game, because he's just awful the whole time. Wiping that smug look off his face is just fantastic. And number three is Schizo from Days Gone. I mean, this guy's name is Schizo. Do we need to go further? Okay, we'll go further. Ah, it's another dude that you just have to look at him and you know he's a total prick. Okay, again, done. No, I I'll talk about him a little. Um, This is a guy who's trying to get credit as some kind of gangbanger after the zombie apocalypse. So like, that's a douche thing to do. And also his appearance is a clear cry for help. He's immediately antagonistic to you when you first arrive at the Lost late camp he's constantly looking for a reason to kick you out he even goes as far as to scheming against you just to get rid of you it's like dude i'm just here to help what's your problem at this point in the game deacon's basically nothing but helpful but all this guy does is complain about how you ran off the first time and say you're gonna disappear again his one-sided hatred of you goes as far as to sell you out to your mutual enemies and ends up getting a lot of innocent people killed just because he's a douchebag usually being a dick doesn't get people killed but here it does and even after the Lost Lake leader went easy on him, he still joined up with a militarist group and eventually shot and killed the leader. He does a lot of bad stuff. But seriously, I don't even need to show you this guy for you to know he is a douche. His name, again, is Schizo. After the zombie apocalypse, this guy decided to go by Schizo. And number two is Micah Bell from Red Dead Redemption 2. Rockstar games have tons of pricks in them. I, you almost could even say they're kind of prick simulators. But the worst of them, at least in my opinion, is Micah Bell. At first, he just seems like another member of the Dutch Vanderlyn gang. But as the story progresses, he, he clearly is the standout douche. The man is an ugly little suck-up who always tells Dutch exactly what he wants to hear, while more reasonable and likable members of the gang like Hosea and Arthur try to tell him the hard truth. He constantly bickers and argues with Arthur over really pointless crap, while being a screw-up and an idiot who kills innocent people and blunders into problems that you eventually have to save him from and instead of being a little grateful or maybe learning a lesson from the experience he just doubles down and becomes a more paranoid and resentful dick in a way that i guess is realistic but wow it just makes this guy so much more hateable as things go along he's just a despicable pathetic character and not in a way that you can sympathize with him because he's such a douchebag when you finally get to put a bullet into him oof it is satisfying and number one, everybody, but especially the survivors in Dying Light 2. You know, for a society that's meant to be built on freedom and mutual cooperation, you'd think that the faction of people holed up in the bazaar in Dying Light 2 would be a little more friendly, but they are not. Almost every single person here is either distrustful, rude, or just outright hateful. All you can do is put up with it for literally hours. It doesn't matter what you do to advance the survivors. It doesn't matter if you help their community thrive. They just hate you, or at very least are dismissive. They're all pretty annoying, but the douchiest is Barney, who spends the entire time complaining, posturing, and making dumb choices. But the ultimate douchebag move is after you take out an entire bandit camp for these guys, and when you get back, they ambush you and accuse you of working with their enemies, the peacekeepers. Even though you literally just killed like a dozen guys for them, and have been building their settlements all over the place for them, Barney sends his little goon to attack you. They get the gall to say that things are dangerous. We just had to be careful. Like, really? Things are dangerous? Like, your justification for trying to kill me is basically what that old man in the cave said to Link at the start of the first Legend of Zelda game? Come on. For being an entire society of douchebags, the survivors from Dying Light 2, they take the top spot. I'm just skimming the surface here, too. If you've played the game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They're just unlikable. Just a gaggle of ungrateful pricks that do eventually start to soften, but it's too little too late. Couple of bonuses for you. The dog from Duck Hunt. Yeah, we had to mention this guy. Laughs it up whenever you miss. There's no way we can not mention him. He's a classic. And also, screw this stupid dog. And then Eric Sparrow from Tony Hawk Underground. Like, do you think we'd forget him? He, we've mentioned him plenty on other lists, though. So we got to put him in the bonus section. He's just a terrible friend that constantly gets you into trouble, resents your success, and keeps on hating it all the way throughout story mode in Tony Hawk Underground. 
Underground. Uh, there is a bit of relatableness to him, though. We've all had a bad friend at some point who treated us like crap or made fun of us behind our backs, particularly because we did something well. And Eric Sparrow is basically that. He's constantly complaining, getting into trouble, and even tries to pass off this incredible stunt tape you made as his own. He's maybe one of the ultimate video game douchebags, but we've kind of just talked about him so much. And even some of the stuff he does sounds like small potatoes compared to some other villains out there. But yeah, we had to bring him up. Look up a compilation of Eric's atrocities on YouTube somewhere. You'll hate him too. Don't worry about it. You'll hate him. We know. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon. Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.